Okay, so I'm presenting today a project that I worked on that uh, in conjunction with Microsoft to create an adaptive card extensions design gallery. Uh, and so a little bit about me, I'm Derek Cash Peterson. I'm a principal architect at Simpraxis Consulting. We're a small uh, consulting company based out of Boston, but with offices all over. Um, I'm also on the PNP team and I'm one of the co-maintainers of Learning Pathways and the SPFX ACES repo. And I promise I'll get to uh, processing those PRs really soon. Um, OK, so what are some of the goals of the project? Before I dive in and start showing it, um, the first thing we wanted to do was make sure that we provided examples to show visually appealing designs uh, in the quick view. You know, a lot of them, especially when when ACEs were first available, were very, very stark. They were black text, white background, a few icons. So we really wanted to up the design level game uh, and provide some more you know, references for you to use in your designs. We also want to provide a demo ready art of the possible sort of showcase piece so that folks can download something, get it up and running really simple and show you know, your colleagues or your stakeholders what can be done with ACEs. It also is meant to serve as an example of how to pull in data, how to manipulate data using some of the built in functions, um, sort of how to use sort of the out of the box um, componentry that you already have in, be in a better practice sort of way. And uh, finally, we wanted to also provide an example of uh, how to do localizations for strings and pull that data into the adaptive cards in the quick view. So not all the text is hard coded into the JSON file. And finally, we wanted to provide an example of how to do deep linking from an adaptive card extension into Teams. So all of those things are sort of wrapped up in the work that I've been doing here. And so there's a couple of different components to, to the design gallery. The first is that it's, it consists of 12 different ACEs in one solution. So when you download or you install it, <clears throat> you have the ability to get all 12 of them. They're all in there um, and you can sort of pick and choose which ones you want to put on your dashboard. There's also a personal app and the personal app is really there to serve two main goals. The first and foremost is to serve as that spot for that deep linking to go to. Uh, so you get to see when you click through from the ACEs into Teams, you get to see some sort of identifying information to indicate the content that got pushed through. Um, and the other is about making sure that it serves as a gallery um, for you to show folks whether or not you're using the dashboard. It's also available as a free download from the Microsoft Store. Um, it's no fuss installation. You can just go to the store, add it to your tenant and the only thing you need to do would be synchronize it to Teams for the Teams application. Um, but if that's not enough, if you want to tinker and you want to see what, um, how we did stuff, you can absolutely do that. The source code is available for you to get out of the reference repo. And so you can download it, see what functions I used and see how I built the service layer and all those kinds of things. So you can take all of that and use it all on your own. All right, so let's see what this looks like. So the first, the first thing that I wanted to show is the cards. Um, so here's the dashboard. It's all set up. Um, I sort of pre-filled it and put all of the all 12 cards on at once. We've got an event schedule. We've got sort of benefits information, um, cafe menus, uh, sort of a COVID booster thing, FAQs, team calendar, which is kind of fun, holiday timelines, all 12. Just sort of sitting out there. So here's the event schedule. You can see we here for this one we did sort of a a tabbed interface. So we've got sort of the 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 line underneath, and you can see that sort of tab thing along with the calendar. Um, we've got the benefits information, which is more news based, and uh, and provides clicking through to additional or deeper articles. We've got the cafe menu. Um, this is showing sort of data manipulation as well as again that tabbed interface. You can also show some details about the, you know, about the place. This is really meant to be art of the possible here. So, you know, while this is a COVID booster registration, what it's really showing is how to do an image card with some form elements and some content. Here's the here's the FAQs. 
the FAQ shows an open and close collapsible sections. So you can sort of take all of this stuff and use it, you know, in your own context. Everybody's favorite image galleries. Um, here we've got the image gallery is specific to products, but you can see you can use this functionality to develop a carousel of a different types of imagery. And here we have a team calendar. Um, this one is kind of fun. It um, it pulls in sort of out of office information, lets you click forward and back on the different calendars. Uh, all of this data in this is dynamic, so it takes month current month plus one uh, and populates some data in it. So if you put this in your tenant, it's not going to expire. Uh, here's an inventory one. This one is showing conditional formatting, where where all the green items are are being used. Uh, we're using number values to set whether they're green or red. Here we've got a timeline. And then here we've got sort of some praise and sort of a list of people type card information here. So there's a lot of these in here. Um, I'm going to pick one to just sort of go through and show a little bit more detail. And that's going to be the event schedule. So for this one, you can click on it, and like I showed before, it has the, the different calendar events for each day, but it's also got a register button at the bottom. And here you can have your users type their content in so they can register for this particular conference. Um, you can do data validation as well. Data validation is in this example. Um, and then when they accept the terms of condition and they click confirm, they get a, you get to review their information and then submit the registration. It's going to now click over to Teams. And then this is going to link over to the personal app. And the personal app shows the information over on the far left under Deep Link that you just put together, that you just passed over, as well as information about the different cards. There's also information specifically about adaptive cards, how to get more information, design guidelines, um, access to the sample code for this. There's also a link to the adaptive card designer. And what this does is this is kind of cool. If you want to play with this on your own, if you click that link, it actually preloads the adaptive card designer with our content. And so you can sort of play with it. This is what it looks like if you don't click in and connect to it, to the personal app from an ACE. It's a listing of all of them. And so you can use this you know, with your key stakeholders to show them what's there, give them a little in for more information, and then let them explore for themselves. This is also great if you need to do a demo for somebody, um, whether it's a key stakeholder or whether it's a client or whatnot. Um, I'm going to jump in and show the code in a minute, but what I really wanted to make sure is that everybody understood that there are two places to get this information. Uh, if you would like the source code for this, the link to the repo is SimpInfo, um, Ace Design Gallery. I don't know, Bessa, if we have an AKA for that, um, but if not, we can we can make one. Um, but if you want to download it from the App Store, you can go to your app catalog, uh, go to the SharePoint Store, and search for Viva, and you'll see that little uh, blue Ace playing card for the Adaptive Card Design Extension, and you can just add it to your tenant right then and there. Okay, so I got a couple more minutes. I'm going to show a little bit of code. So the one thing I want to I want to say is because this is demo and meant to be sort of evergreen for you to do your demos, we we loaded all the data into JSON files, and this is an example of the data that I created. So you know there's an array of cafeterias, and each cafeteria has their own type of cuisine. Um, each one of those cuisines has an ID, a name, a description, a food type, um, which is just a, a different value for me to help separate it out in the layout and then a link to the image that we're going to use in that. That data is pulled in using the service layer. And so you can see I have a get cafeterias um, function here in my service layer, and it's pulling in the data the, the data.json file. If you were going to use this for real, you can take the code and you would replace this part right here with a call to PNPJS um, or a call to SharePoint. Um, to get that data out of a list, or if you had a system of record, you could have a call somewhere else, call a graph, whatever. You could you can customize that for yourself. In order to generate the link to get into Teams, we have to sort of do some massaging 
um, of the data, and I'm creating a custom object that I'm passing in, which is what we're doing right here on this line. Um, and I have got a custom object that I've created. I'm passing in the name of the app so that all 12 of them can have a different, you know, I know which one's getting clicked on. And then the link type, um, not super relevant to this particular example, but you get the picture that you can sort of take this and push as much as you want um, through there. Okay, so then if we move over to the adaptive card extension, you can see on the init method, I'm making a call to that get cafeterias function, and then I'm assigning it into the state so that it's going to be available inside my quick view. So inside the quick view, and I've only got a couple more minutes, um, there's a couple of things I want to share in specifically here. And the first is that localization piece. So what we ended up doing here is in the data interface, um, I created I created something called, you know, an, a property called strings, and I assigned it a property of the adaptive card extension strings, which is exactly what you would use if you were in, you know, your TS file and you would do strings dot whatever the name of your string is. I'm passing all of the strings into the JSON file so that you can access them in that way. Um, and then obviously I'm passing in the different cafeterias and the different cuisines. Quickly going over to the quick view, let's scroll up to the top. Um, you can see we're setting up the image here. Um, this is one of those strings that we're doing here. So we're doing dollar sign root dot strings dot open status. I just started sort of prefixing all the stuff that was at the root with dollar sign root because if you're in a loop um, that can get sort of confusing. So I just wanted from a from a consistency standpoint that I want to make sure that it was easy to you know identify what was what. Um, but this is going to pull the value from the localized string in called open status. All right, the other thing that I wanted to show is um, that sort of toggle menu with the with the, the tabbed interface. So you can see here we're using, um, we're setting up the menu header, and then we've got the info header. So one's on, one's off. One's got the little divider line, the gray line underneath it, and one doesn't. We're using the select action. We're using action.toggle visibility. And so we're showing and hiding different elements of the card when that element is clicked. And so that way there's no, you know, you don't really need to go back um, and do any work there. You just sort of click the button and things show or hide and the visibility toggles. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show is one of the built-in functions. Um, if you need to pass data to your adaptive card extension, uh, to a loop, like if you're going to loop through something, you can do use the dollar sign data property. And then you can put in your array. Um, and in this instance, I had one array of cuisines, but I wanted to split it out into two different categories. And so I'm using the built in function called where. Right here, and I'm passing in the array of cuisines. Now there's 10 things in there. All of them have a different food type. And so we're going to go in and this particular column set is going to use a subset of the cuisine items where the food type is equal to special. So you don't need to do all of this processing on the back end. You may decide you want to, um, you know, in your TS file, but you can also do it as well inside your quick view. And I think that's about it. So here we're looping through the data. Um, we're showing the different cuisine, the name, the description. We're showing the arrow. And then this is where we're, we're setting up the, um, the link that goes to Teams. So we're using the act with the select action. We're using the action to open URL type. And then we're passing in that link URL that we generated from the service layer when we did the original get. All right. And then here we're showing again, we're passing in the column set to the column set, the data, the cuisines data, but this time we're just pulling the standard data, the standard food types, not the, um, you know, not the special ones. And then the rest is sort of all the same and those things just get shown and hidden depending on um, which tab you've selected. And that is what I have. <laughs> so back to you, Patrick, 
or awesome stuff. Week. Thanks, Derek. Yeah. Uh, really excited to see that design gallery out there and encourage folks to check that out. Great resource to show people what is possible with adaptive cards and the kind of rich solutions you can build with them to help uh, your users get more connected to your organizations and information. Thank you.